German physicist Sevan Hosenfelder released a video on her channel about three years ago titled You Don't Have Free Will But Don't Worry. In it, she challenges the commonly held belief in free will by examining it through the lens of contemporary physics. She argues that the notion of free will is incompatible with the laws of nature and is logically incoherent. Considering the fact that I just released a review of Sam Harris's book on free will, let's look at another critique of free will from the lens of physics. Hosenfelder defines free will as the ability to choose among different possible futures. This idea is intuitive because it aligns with our everyday experiences. However, she asserts that the concept is flawed when examined through the lens of physics. She explains that all known laws of nature are based on differential equations. These equations describe how the state of a system evolves over time. Given the initial conditions of a system, these equations can predict its future states precisely. This determinism means that the future is preordained by the initial conditions of the universe, rendering the idea of free will illusory. Isaac Newton's laws of motion, encapsulated in differential equations, illustrates this determinism. If one knows the position and velocity of every particle in the universe, one can in theory predict their future trajectories. Critics may label this view as reductionist or materialist, but Hausenfeld emphasizes that these are not merely philosophical stances, they are backed by empirical evidence. The behavior of microscopic objects, including the human brain, can be understood in terms of microscopic constituents which follow deterministic laws. Hossenfielder acknowledges that while chaotic systems like the human brain are sensitive to initial conditions and are thus difficult to predict, they are still deterministic in nature. Chaos theory shows that small differences in initial conditions can lead to vastly different outcomes, but these outcomes are still governed by deterministic rules. Edward Lorenz's discovery of the butterfly effect in weather systems is a prime example. While weather is chaotic and hard to predict over long periods, it is not random. Given precise initial conditions, the weather could, in principle, be predicted accurately. Quantum mechanics introduces an element of fundamental randomness. Events at the quantum level, such as the decay of a radioactive atom, are truly random and cannot be predicted. The Copenhagen interpretation of quantum mechanics posits that particles exist in a superposition of states until observed, at which point they randomly collapse into one state. However, Hossenfelder points out that this randomness does not rescue free will at all. Quantum events are not influenced by agents' will. They are inherently random. Thus, randomness does not provide a basis for free will. Consider Schrodinger's cat, a thought experiment illustrating quantum superposition. The cat state, alive or dead, is random until observed. This randomness is not controlled by any external will, further undermining the idea that quantum mechanics allows for free will. Hossenfelder argues that if our choices are determined by prior states, they are not free. If they are random, they are not willed. Thus, the traditional notion of free will is logically incoherent. In neuroscience, studies by Benjamin Labé and others have shown that brain activity predicting a decision occurs before the individual becomes consciously aware of the decision. This implies that our sense of making a free choice is an after-the-fact realization. Some philosophers attempt to redefine free will to fit within a deterministic framework, suggesting it means unpredictability or internal decision-making. Hossenfelder finds these redefinitions unsatisfactory, arguing that they do not change the fundamental incompatibility with the laws of nature. Compatibilists like the late Daniel Dennett argue that free will is compatible with determinism if defined as acting according to one's desires and motivations, even if those desires and motivations are determined. Hossenfelder disagrees, stating that this is merely a semantic exercise. Hossenfelder posits that our sense of free will arises from our self-awareness and inability to predict the outcome of our brain's calculations. We feel we're making free choices because we are conscious of the decision-making process, not the outcome. Artificial intelligence and machine learning algorithms make decisions based on complex calculations. While these systems do not possess self-awareness, their decision-making processes are deterministic, akin to human brains. Hossenfelder addresses concerns that denying free will might erode moral behavior, and in the previous video I also touched something similar about what some highlighted about the possibility that believing we don't have free will means people will have debased moral behavior. But Hossenfelder argues that moral responsibility does not rely on free will, but on the consequences of actions and societal responsibility to harmful behavior. In legal systems, the concept of diminished responsibility acknowledges that factors beyond an individual's control can influence behavior, yet individuals are still held accountable to maintain social order. Studies suggesting a link between disbelief in free will and immoral behavior often conflate fatalism with a lack of free will. More nuanced studies show that understanding the deterministic nature of human behavior can lead to more ethical decisions. 
Hosenfeld suggests that acknowledging the illusion of free will can lead to better understanding and conscious decision making. She encourages a shift in perspective, viewing life as a determined story yet to be told, where curiosity and understanding of cognitive processes play crucial roles. Recognizing cognitive biases and logical fallacies can improve decision making. Understanding that our choices are influenced by prior states and information can help us make more informed and rational decisions. Hosenfelder concludes her video by saying that the concept of free will is an illusion incompatible with the deterministic nature of the universe. However, recognizing this illusion can lead to more informed and conscious decision making. She encourages a practical use of the concept of free will while being aware of its limitations and the deterministic factors influencing our behavior. By understanding how our thinking apparatus works, we can mitigate cognitive biases and make better decisions, ultimately leading to a more rational and ethical life. So in summary, Hosenfelder's argument against free will is grounded in the deterministic nature of physical laws and the logical incoherence of the traditional concept of free will. By integrating insights from physics, chaos theory, quantum mechanics, and neuroscience, she provides a comprehensive critique of free will while offering a pragmatic approach to decision-making and moral responsibility. And that too stands to lords and lords of debate.